Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us in our Golf House studios for History Makers. And folks, this is the definition of making history. Tiger Woods, the most recognizable and celebrated name in golf history, was a household name years before he took his game to the professional ranks. In fact, Tiger's celebrity status was largely built on his performance in USGA Amateur Championships. Dave, Woods won an astonishing nine USGA Championships over an 18-year span, and that all began with the 1991 US Junior Amateur, which he won in 19 holes. At that point, no one in the long history of the championship had won more than once. So naturally, Tiger won the next two years as well. Well, Tiger was already a marked man when he graduated to college golf and the elite amateur level. And let's be honest, he was more than ready. Tiger advanced to the championship match of the U.S. Amateur in 1994, 95, and 96, and he fell behind each time, only to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat on each occasion. Here it is, the best of Tiger Woods' celebrated USGA amateur career. Every legend has an origin. But in the game of golf, a sport with a long and hallowed list of immortals, it would be hard to find a beginning more brilliant than that of Tiger Woods. Meanwhile, at the U.S. Junior Amateur, a 15-year-old Tiger Woods was among the entrants. In a championship that many say is as competitive and difficult to win as any other in the sport, with nearly 2,200 entries that year, Woods advanced to the final against Brad Zweski in a match that would prove to be the start of golf history. It went into sudden death, but when it was over, Tiger Woods was the youngest ever winner of the USGA Junior Amateur Championship. I wasn't necessarily intimidated, but we got to see how, you know, he got that fire. He wasn't quitting. He was going to knock down some shots, make some putts. It was on. The next year, 1992, only proved to be more of the same. As against Mark Wilson, an eventual five-time winner on the PGA Tour, Woods won his second straight junior amateur. He was like an icon, like a god almost. I shouldn't talk to him, right? I can tell my kids and grandkids about what it was like to play against Tiger Woods. The win made Woods the only player in the history of the USGA junior amateur to win the championship more than once. But he wasn't finished yet. As again in 1993, he took the trophy, this time defeating Ryan Armour. Already, it was undeniable. <laughs> Tiger Woods looked like he could become an all-time great. I think the biggest influence he's had in the last 15 years is the level of athlete that has gotten into golf. In 1994, at age 18, Tiger moved into the United States Amateur Championship, the oldest golf championship in the country featuring the best amateur golfers in the world, with no age or gender restrictions on entry. Now it was about a new challenge and a legend to chase, the biggest name in the history of amateur golf, the immortal Bob Jones. Jones won the US Amateur five times and owned the best match play winning percentage in the championship's history. But now, Tiger Woods was chasing him. That year, he waged a classic match against Trip Keeney, with Keeney taking a six-hole advantage in the morning round. And then Woods storming back to pull off the greatest turnaround in the championship's 94-year history. All square. In a run highlighted by a memorable 15-foot putt on the 35th hole. It seemed like he was always able to, you know, to take it to the next level. And to me, that was his, you know, that's his true greatness. The next year, Woods was at it again. And against George Buddy Marucci in a memorable, grueling match that wasn't decided until the 36th hole. Tiger won the U.S. Amateur again. And Tiger Woods has closed out Buddy Marucci. I just don't think there'll ever be anybody at that level 
of greatness. We've seen the greatest players, but I don't think we'll ever see anybody at that level. Then came the 1996 amateur, when Woods and Steve Scott faced off in a match that went 38 holes. One of the most dramatic finals in the history of the championship. Both golfers played tremendously that day, with Scott leading most of the way. But in a sudden death playoff, Tiger Woods came out on top again. Winning his third straight U.S. Amateur title. And moreover, dating back to the junior amateur, he had an unbelievable six championships in a row. Another Tiger comeback completed. And with it, golf history. The man flips the switch better than anybody. And so many people have asked me along the way, uh, you know, wow, wasn't he so lucky? Wasn't he, you know, I said, I said, partner, it's not, it's not luck if you do it six times in a row. He's the only player to ever win either championship three times in a row, let alone pull off this unique kind of six-peat. Each championship presented its own challenge, starting with where he first tested his skills as a 15-year-old in the 1991 U.S. Junior Amateur. Most important, obviously, the juniors by far, because um, there's an age limit. Uh, once you turn 18, you're, you're no longer a junior anymore. Um, you're out of it. So uh, there's a ceiling. So you have to get it done early, and uh, to be able to win multiple, and then obviously to win, win three in a row was uh, was more than I, you know I, I thought I could do, but somehow pulled it off. My expectations are usually higher than everybody else's. So. I may live up to everybody else's, but I might not live up to mine, and uh, I don't really like that. The 15-year-old Tiger Woods was playing against 16-year-old Brad Zweski. Woods struggled and fell behind at the start, but then made a move to get ahead. On the 18th hole, though, a bogey from Tiger left the score tied, and the match headed to sudden death. I think I have a one-up lead playing 18. I put two balls in the water at Bay Hill, which is great, you know? Um, so then we go to the first hole, and I win the hole with bogey uh, to his double. And so that's how the first one came about. We're both choking our guts out. I believe I was four up through sixth, four under, and I was like, you know, here we go. Let's do this. And then I wasn't necessarily intimidated, but we got to see how you know, he got that fire, he wasn't quitting. He was gonna knock down some shots, make some putts. So he won eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So uh, after that, it was it was on. Um, was there a, like a lucky point in the match? Like you said, man, this guy's the luckiest guy ever. I, I know there was something in, he was probably a few in my match that, that happened and sure we could all kind of, well, I mean. He was probably saying that about me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with this kid? But uh, no, he, he hit some shots. Um, that he could have sealed it on 16 or 17, and um, but he missed like a four footer on 17. I was taking my glove out of my pocket and the tee's out and I was ready to shake his hand and um, he missed a short one uh, on 17, but uh, yeah, the, he was able to close. And uh, also somehow they're able to, uh, to come out on top of that match, uh, but I was so nerve wracking uh, to be able to win that, 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 that event. The win was Wood's first major victory and made him the youngest winner of the U.S. Junior Amateur in history. Is there one shot that you would have back or you just, you know? Or... Yeah, it was on the first playoff hole. Mm -hmm. um, he, he hit it down to the right and I kind of hit it over, took it over the trees on the left. Right. And I had a shorter iron in and I just got it into this horrible mess over the back bunker. So he didn't have to close with a clutch birdie. Right. To, to close me out, um, I had to push a four-footer and a chunk it out of a bunker <laughs> to lose it. But nevertheless, you know, um, they had to get started somewhere, so. The next year, the junior amateur was held at the Wollaston Golf Club in Milton, Massachusetts. And Woods found himself battling for the title against Mark Wilson. I had plenty of holes to, to make it up. But I had to play really good golf, and I had to play mistake-free and, and, and just had to have a clean card coming in. I couldn't afford to, to drop a hole. Just couldn't make those type of mistakes. I had to play very clean golf. I was two up. Basically, it felt like the whole day. Right. Um, and then I 
14th tee, I was still two up, and then he, he won 14, 16, and 18. So it was kind of didn't have a stretch there, but, but I knew he was going to hang in there. He wasn't going to quit, you know. And a lot of the short putts he made, I think that sticks out in my mind. He made about a five footer on 17 that after I'd made one for par, and I'm thinking I'm going to last hole one up. I'm like, he can't, he can't knock this in. All, you know, the expectations are all on him to get it done. I'm like, maybe he's going to falter. And now he just drains it one after another, those short putts. And, so he wasn't wasting any shots. I think I was two down with four or five to go. And I remember making two birdies coming in. And we get to 18. And again, two guys choking their guts out. And it was who was going to make the least amount of mistakes on the last hole. And I believe I won that hole with a bogey as well. Wood's defeat of Wilson made him the first player to win a second US Junior Amateur Championship in the 45-year history of the event. 93 at the Waverly Country Club in Portland, Oregon. Tiger Woods met Ryan Armour in the finals of the U.S. Junior Amateur Championship. The 17-year-old Woods was the two-time defending champion, but hungry for a third straight title. Um, 17, I hit a nice shot in there, stiff. I remember balls were plugging, and so that my ball plugged up next to the hole and I ended up making, making birdie there. And 18, I. All I remember is I had a, a, a nervy putt um, from about uh, six, seven feet to, to get into extra holes, and I was able to make it. And you know, he he made a bogey on going down one, and I made par. Yeah, I think I believe he hit over the back of the green, and then get up and down. The match was hardly easy. Over the last few holes, any one mistake might have cost Woods a shot at the three peat. But he prevailed over Armour in 19 holes to win the championship yet again. There's this hole in Portland that goes along the Willamette River and, uh, you know, big pine trees there. And I have to hit, like, kind of a three-wood out to the corner and a four-iron on the green. Well, he just takes driver out and sends it over these huge evergreens out in the middle of the river and hooks it back into the fairway, going opposite <laughs> the dog leg. What a shot. Well, I got 185 yards, and he's got 100. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. what's happening here? I mean, it wasn't... You know, but I mean, I played the hole to make four. I made four, and he buries a 10 footer. And, you know, then we go to 18, he makes another birdie, a 50 yard up and down out of a fairway bunker. I mean, you don't do that down the stretch. I mean, that's he, amazing. He's that, two down, and he's going to take on that shot. Right. You know, to think, you know, I if mean, I if block this, it's it, over. It's in the water. <laughs> it's feet. over. But no, he's not thinking that. He he's thinking, how am I going to make birdie? Right. Yeah. Were there a lot of people watching? Because, I mean, at ours, there's like 2,000 people watching. It was a new thing for me. Did that, you get well, a lot in Portland? I was, I was kind of familiar with that because of the year before when you lost to him mm -hmm. in the finals, but they doubled that in Portland. There was wow. about 5,000 people following the one match, and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you're a kid, you know, you've never done that before. And I remember kind of the, the wave of emotions that hits you after it's done, and the one I remember is fatigue. I mean, I was just tired. Woods' win at Waverly in 1993 marked the end of his junior amateur career. It was now time to move on to a bigger target, the United States Amateur. August of 1994, at TPC Sawgrass Stadium course in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, he faced off against Trip Keeney for the title. Now Woods, five down. This to win the hole, a birdie putt for Tiger. Got it! Woods and Keeney were friends, but that wasn't going to temper the competition and the match was a struggle for Tiger throughout. Trip was just <laughs> kicking my butt after the first 18. I was down early on five. If I get to two or three through nine, it was, was the goal. And then I, could, I had a chance going to the back nine, but I had to get it to at least two or three. And then I ended up burning 11 to get it to one down. And then finally, I pulled a rabbit out of my hat on 14. Hit on the right trees, and some kind of punch cut through the trees. End up on the green and end up making a miracle par there. Poor drive at the par five. Second tried to play a heroic shot. Ended up in the fairway bunker well short of the screen. At one point, he was six down. No one had ever come back to win the event after being down that many holes. This is his fifth stroke. A wonderful par. But once again, Tiger Woods was the exception, pulling off the greatest turnaround in the championship's 94-year history and becoming the youngest winner 
of the oldest golf championship in the United States. Tiger Woods is the youngest U.S. amateur champion ever. Could Tiger Woods become golf's next superstar? They'll take him. He's a likable young man, and what a performance here today. And I got lucky as hell on 17, because I hit the, I had a wedge, and ironically enough, okay, I hit the wedge, look, it should have been in the water, and I hit the fringe, popped up, and it stayed. And I remember the putt um, breaking more than I thought. I missed it, you know, low, pretty significantly low. That putt, if you look at it, right before it comes onto the green, it hit something, and it kicked it up the hill, and went right in the middle of the hole. Got it. Tiger Woods you know what he's goes one up. August of 1995, at Newport Country Club in Newport, Rhode Island, George Buddy Marucci became the latest to try and stop Tiger Woods. I'm only a teenager, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm only a sophomore in college. I, I'm, you know, legally I can't do a lot of things. Um, it, I, I think that's the way it ought to be approached, and that's the way I'm approaching it. Uh, I'm not getting caught up in all the, the hoopla and you know, age, blah blah blah, place in history. I'm just going out there and trying to do the things that I, I can do, which is uh, trying to get the ball in the hole. What ensued was a grueling extraordinary 36-hole match. Tiger was a freshman at Stanford. Buddy was 43 years old. They battled to a near standstill, each playing with poise and elegance throughout. Right at it, Roger. It's in. Turn the momentum around a little bit. Look at that smile, buddy. It won't hurt. Buddy and I, we had a, we had a great match. I mean, he chipped in on eight, par three coming down the hill. He was just putting it on me, uh, and I, I was waiting for him to make any kind of mistake. He was driving on a string right down the middle of the fairway. He doesn't carry it very far, but those fairways at, at Newport were running. Buddy just put it on me. He, he drove it great. His little little pop stroke that he had. You know, he get down there, build a little stance, and pop it in there, and he was making everything. We had a huge crowd in Newport. We must have had 11,000, 12,000 people. I mean, it was it was larger than anything I had seen, not to mention it had been larger than anything which I had played. You know, I never played in front of anybody like that. The cordial, very cordial match. Tiger was very, very much a gentleman. But because of the distance difference, I never really got to see him. I saw him on the, on the teeing ground, and I would see him on the green, but I would never see him during the match because he would be so far up the fairway. So. The demeanor was great, but we were kind of to ourselves. The match, we played really well, which was one of the things I was most proud of about the match. We both played well. We were under par in the morning, two or three under, and uh, I was two under in the afternoon, and Tiger was four under in the afternoon, and that's kind of the way it ended. It's pretty good. Looking putt here. Somehow I ended up getting a lead um, going down 18 and or end up having being half going down 18 and I hit some kind of beautiful little cut seven iron in there. And um, I remember watching the telecast afterwards and Johnny Miller says it wouldn't be surprised if he hit it to a foot. And <laughs> of course Johnny just blurts out stuff like that, but this time he blurted out and actually I didn't hit it to a foot, I hit it inside of a foot. <laughs> so uh, it was just one of those miracle things, miracle shots. After three straight USGA junior amateur wins, it was a second consecutive victory at the US Amateur. And Tiger Woods has closed out Buddy Marucci. Second straight. By now, Tiger Woods was indisputably the most dominating amateur since Jack Nicklaus. In August of 1996, at the Pumpkin Ridge Golf Club in North Plains, Oregon, 20-year-old Tiger Woods set his eyes on yet another championship. And his match against Steve Scott was yet another tremendous duel. This one stretching to 38 holes. Scott held the lead most of the morning. With many observers getting the sense, this might be the year Woods would finally be beat. Steve just flat out outplayed me in the morning. He just put it on me and I made a couple mistakes. 
he capitalized on that and then forced me to make a few more, and then he, he played well on top of that. So huge margin again. I was five up after 18, and then he, he shaved off four strokes by, by the turn in the afternoon. Uh, so I'm one up going to the 28th hole of the match, and uh, kind of the, the, the flop shot to kind of turn things around. I hold the flop shot from off the green, and you know I jumped higher than uh, <laughs> than any one my my stature might should uh, should jump. I, I might have been able to dunk. I might. I almost fell down over on the side of the hill, and and then he turned it right back on the next hole. He buried a, a 35 or 40 footer that he easily could have three putted. It was the 34th hole of the match. Um, I was two up at the time. I hit it in the greenside bunker, and best I could do was hit it about 10 feet from the hole. And he had spun a wedge back off the off the hill at about six feet. Will it come back? Yes, it will. That ball was probably two or three inches from hanging up in the rough over the green, the heavy rough. And his mark was in my line. I asked him to move it like he would on every any Saturday match at the club. Steve asked me to move my mark on 16, and he had a, he had a birdie putt down there, and so did I. I had forgotten to move my coin back, and he said, hey, move your coin back, out of true sportsmanship. He could have just you know, kept his mouth shut and let me not move the coin back, me hit it from the wrong spot, and him win the hole. Um, he was a great sport, and that's, that was the beauty of golf, man. That's what, that's what golf's all about. How about that for sportsmanship in the heat of this championship battle? And this time he's got it. And I, I think that's the, that's, the, that's the greatest thing I learned from that match. And I've, you know, I've, made, I've got a lot of traction from that moment. You know, not, not winning, uh, but, but I, you know, I think we all won that day. Do we go down 17? I remember my buddy Brian catting for me in, in, in the match play portion there, and um, I said, Bri, hey, it's just, it's five inches outside left. That's all it is. I don't, I don't care what speed I hit, it's gonna go in. He says, all right, knock it in, and it's all right. So for some reason, normally you see like a, a line or you feel a line. It's probably the first and only time I've ever seen like a trough, like literally like a, like a highlighted trough that no matter what I did, it was gonna go in. If I threw it five inches out and I hit it soft, five inches out and I hit it hard, it was going to go in. Don't ask me how I knew or how things work out that way sometimes in sports, but that's how that happened. And I happened to bury the putt. It's good. Great speed, it's oh, in. Wow. Are you serious? Tiger, unbelievable, I tell you. I remember going down 18 thinking, boy, I'm pretty nervous right now. I'm just gonna go hit a high bombing cut, and I just smoked this thing down there. And got it down there, and Steve made a great birdie, got up and down, made a, made a birdie, and we went to extras, and um, I happened to get him on, on the second extra. Ultimately, Woods got the win on the second hole of a sudden death playoff. Going back to the juniors, it was the sixth consecutive year Woods had won a USGA title. At 20 years old, he'd done essentially everything he could as an amateur. Mike, you could watch that a thousand times and it still ceases to amaze. Tiger winning a USGA championship in six straight years. Three straight U.S. junior amateurs, followed by three straight U.S. amateurs. That's a 36-0 match play record, which is simply stunning. It really is, Dave. And we also know the impact Tiger had on the professional game. And by the time 2000 rolled around, it felt like he was destined to win the U.S. Open. And to say he won it that year is really to put it lightly. Quite frankly, he played a different sport than the rest of the field that week at Pebble Beach to win his first U.S. Open. And that was just the beginning. Woods followed two years later at Bethpage Black in a celebrated duel against Sergio Garcia. And after a few close calls in the following years, Tiger delivered one of the most memorable moments in golf history at Torrey Pines in 2008. A dramatic 72nd hole birdie and a thrilling playoff win over Rocco Mediate. 
Watch again for yourself and relive Tiger's three U.S. Open victories. 14. Tiger Woods coming out of that deep rough, his third shot mark. Really hard to describe, Dan, just how good that shot was. He had to play it under the tree, land it in the long rough, and have it jump out. Incredible short game the man has. That was, I can't believe he pulled that off. So now he's got that, guys, for his fifth birdie of the day. What an up and down again this would be, Mark Rolfing. It really would. Uh, Tiger plays absolutely with no fear at all, Johnny. I mean, there are not probably a dozen players in the field that would even try that shot. So Tiger Woods has tied Miguel Angel Jimenez for the lead in the U.S. And that's the one thing he's had to watch for. Ball spinning a little more as he plays his approach shots around the green. So a good safe par there for Tiger. He'll remain at five under. Wow. What a save. How good is he coming back after pushing it by the cup? Probably end up with 24 with the normal bunker shot. It was hunting the hole. Well, when he gets that one in, Johnny, it will be an incredible round of golf. It was a picture perfect round. The closest thing he made to a bogey was the par save at 17. And other than that, he played fabulous. For a 65. Nothing to it, straight in. Last time a 65 shot in the open. Paul Azinger in the final round at Olympic Club back in 98. Tiger Woods came into this championship, Johnny, as the favorite. And after this first round is complete for him, no one's going to be changing their minds. No, it isn't. It, it slopes toward the front, so you would think this may turn a little right. the speed and yet another birdie Tiger Woods to seven under par putting on a putting clinic I can tell you that I would say that half of the field would pitch it back into the fairway but certainly not Tiger he's got 202 yards to the hole I think he could probably get a seven or eight iron on it he may get it all the way up there Look at this. Look at this. He thinks strength is not an advantage. It's just not a fair fight. No, it really isn't, Roger. <laughs> I mean, that is phenomenal. Puts it on the green, 15 feet from the hole. My question is, how do you beat that? I mean, I, I agree with you, Gary. Half the field would say, look over to the fairway and say, I'm just going to pitch it out over here and I'm going to try to make a five. Well, look at the smile on his face. Look at the smile on Steve Williams' face. They know that uh, he's the only man in the field that can do it. Here's Steve. You tell you what, that was some shot. <laughs> if you impress him, if you impress Steve Williams, you've done something because he's seen a lot of good ones from Tiger. Tiger Woods with uh, Mark, I would have to say, a, a makeable eagle putt. I think so, Gary. It's uh, going to turn a little bit left at first coming off of this hill over here. And it really was a remarkable shot. He walked past me coming up the hill, and he said, I guess that one will do, won't it? And I said, tell me you hit a 7-iron. He goes, yep. <laughs> 202 yards out of the rough, up the hill, 7-iron. You're right, Raj. It's not a fair fight. It's just not a fair fight. <laughs> well, there have been four eagles recorded here so far. Two yesterday, Roger. Two today. I just get the sense there's going to be a fifth. <laughs> that has been missed to the left by a lot of players from this position, not reading quite enough break into it. Let's see if Tiger can read it properly. Oh, oh. Go. Oh. No, no, that's 
been the tendency from there. Tiger for his tap-in birdie. That's the 35th birdie of the day here at the sixth hole, the easiest hole in the golf course. Tiger Woods back to seven under par and back to a two-shot lead. Can't help but think, Mark Rolfing, about the differentiation and the strength that it took to hit that seven iron on the last hole, and now the delicate touch that it'll take to hit this shot right here. He's always had the strength, Murph, you know, since he came out on the tour, but it's really only in the last year that he has perfected this shot. He has worked so hard on it. Totally in control from this distance now. And you've been one hole and one on this hole in open play. Weisskopf in 82. Just right of the flag. What a shot. What a shot is right. Tiger made birdie here in the first round. There, he knows that ball was short and right. At 11 to get to eight under par. Very difficult short putt here. Not much more than four feet. A right, putt right. you really have to hit defensively, don't you think, Mark? I, I think he does, especially at this stage of the game. He's going to play it, I would think, nearly a cup outside, maybe even a little more. But he cannot hit it firm. in the center. When he won at Memorial a few weeks ago, he had a 29-hole stretch of 17 under par. This 29-hole stretch was not as explosive, but just as impressive, if not more, 8 under in a U.S. Open. Only 16% of the field has hit this green in regulation today. So, that tells you how hard it is, but this is the man that, that probably can hit it higher and spin it harder than anybody else in the field. That's why I said I'd rather come back and try it tomorrow. Pulled it slightly toward the center of the green. Good shot. Good work. Hold on, Tiger. Certainly acceptable. Once again, a slow putt uphill, breaks to the right. Are you kidding wow. me? What a way to finish this afternoon. Good night. Well, we talked about whether or not he wanted to hit the shot, Roger, and all he did was make a two. Dear Field, there's something to sleep on. Wow. Sometimes words just don't get it done, Mike. <laughs> 238 yards to the hole. And trying to get it up and down from this distance from How's it look, Mark? It is just left of the flag. It needs to get up. Go! It's up. Well, still a chance for a five, but should make six at the worst. Those are two pressure shots after going in the ocean, I'll tell you that.
Seagulls are having a party. So, looks like it'll be a bogey for Tiger Woods, and a six looks very good after what happened back at the tee. So Tiger Woods now for bogey. So he follows up the 65 with a 69. Is this exciting for you at all? I mean, or is this just business as usual? It doesn't matter where we are or what tournament we're in. I wouldn't necessarily say it's exciting. It's more grinding than it is exciting because you're working pretty hard out there. Uh, you're trying to keep your emotions intact. You're trying to focus on what you need to do, stay in the present. Um, you're trying to not have the huge highs and lows uh, of emotions. And you know, it, from that, that standpoint, you're working so hard on, on trying to keep everything together that uh, you may lose sight of the fact that maybe it is exciting. But uh, I'm just working pretty hard out there. This putt now downhill will move to his right. And I think uh, usually turns a little bit more than the players realize from here. But pace is really the key issue. Should move to the right. I'm going to say, oh, maybe a foot and a half to two feet. say it, how many different words can you use to describe it? Aiming right, starting it right. Wonderful again, that was a sand wedge. We haven't seen any wedges in about an hour. And you can tell from Tiger Slacks, the wind has really died. This is not a difficult birdie putt. This is not a difficult game for that young man. Good leave. A little uphill, maybe inside right? Yes, inside right or split the right edge, depending on pace. Oh, it's just been outstanding on this back nine at Pebble. His last bogey came at the tenth. And again, that's uh, one of the more difficult holes here at Pebble.
Oh, this looks really good. Oh. <laughs> 18 holes left for Tiger Woods in his quest to be crowned the 100th U.S. Open champion. And with a 10-shot lead, here's his on his way. When you won the Masters, you went into the final round with a nine-stroke lead. Was there anything that you learned from that experience that you'll take with you into tomorrow because you will have the largest lead, final round lead in the history of the U.S. Open? Well, it's, just, it's the same thing. You just need to go out there and play one shot at a time. It, it comes down to that simple basics, and, and I need to go do that. I did that in 97. I stayed in the present and uh, worked, worked my butt off all day and uh, got myself a jacket. Now, uh, tomorrow I need to go out there and and then grind away, and uh, hopefully I can come out on top. Tiger's second. That's from 125, just 115 to the front edge. is kind of a flick of a wedge for him. Uh, this is well after the hole toward the center of the green. What an advantage, though, to be able to play a wedge second shot to a 446-yard par phone. This looks good here. Yes, sir. Tiger Woods to nine under par, and the par string is broken. This is a five iron. I think this might go high, Raj. Real high. Just a towering shot, Johnny, at the center of the green. What a beautiful looking golf shot. <laughs> Advantage Tiger. It's a tough read, isn't it, Roger, for anybody? It really is. It's a putt that has to be remembered, John, really. If you get it outside the hole, if I remember right, that second half does not move left. Correct. Double digits. Are there any questions that Tiger knew exactly what that putt did? There is the historic figure. Double digits under par for just the second time in an open. Sand iron, this ball going right at the flag stick. <laughs> wow. Is Play this really happening? Golf. Is this really happening? Play some golf, young man. This is fun to watch. Perfect leave right underneath the hole. So a chance for his fourth birdie on this front nine, on this back <laughs> nine. I would imagine uh, this is going down also, Rod. You'd have to think. <laughs> and yet never in question history. By Tiger Woods, 12 under and an open. What a back nine he's having, huh, Roger? This is not a good break right here. He's just got enough where it went slightly on the downslope, huh, Roger? And he's going to be tough to stop it. It did, and it's a little below his feet as well, so uh, this will make it a little tougher to stop it. He's got to get altitude on it. You almost like play a, a an on-purpose push. He, look where he's aiming, his body and everything's at the left edge of the green, and then he'll sort of just push it over to the right. 
caught that awfully good, John. How Look, about at, this? Oh, Look at oh. this. Oh, my. Thought what? we were oh. going to see another <laughs> great drama at 17 at and mom. opens past. <laughs> Just a formality, the par at 17, and that sets up the drama at the par five. Oh, in the area of 100 yards. And this just fine, right in the center of the fairway. Well, we've been digging up the records in this championship, but perhaps the most impressive is going to be the record margin of victory for any major championship. Before today, it was 13 shot victory in the British Open. Back in 1862 by old Tom Morris, 138 years ago in just the third British Open play. Put it even further perspective, golf hadn't even begun in this country back then. Hmm. Well, for years they said it would never be that uh, another dominant player like uh, the likes of even Watson, of course, Nicholas, and the player, great players of the past. But uh, he's here, and it's now. Well, Roger, what do we have? 123 yards left of the hole, John, and this is... Uh, well, not a full pitching wedge for him, just a nice one. Well, it's not a bad wind direction for this whole location. It's blowing a little into and to the right. You get hit right at the pin and come down softly. This shot a little left of the hole. Needs to get down a little bit, it looks like. They'll have a crack at another record. Let the Tiger Woods coronation begin officially. In front of the fans at 18. Thirty six hole scoring record tied earlier. Fifty four hole score to par record. Thirty six hole lead. Biggest ever. 54 hole lead. Biggest ever. 72 hole lead. The best. 72 hole score to par. Ties other champions as being a wire to wire finisher. The question is is, is he going to be 12 under or 13 under? And that championship trophy awaits. The only player we saw all day make this putt was Nick Faldo, who was leading in putting going into the day. And uh, it does pretty much, I think, what Tiger figures it will go right about, what, a foot, Roger? Uh, yes, John, maybe even just a shade more than that. made the great par save at 16, Roger, and the unbelievably good bunker shot at 17. So we might as well do 18 is equally there, well. Is there one more record left in his magic putter? Just carried a little too much speed, otherwise it would have gone in. 
And you can see now it's actually behind the hole and a little to the right. So he had the right line, Roger, a little too hard. So he needs this for the 272 scoring total, which would tie the record. Record shared by Jack Nicholas and Lee Jansen. Well, it's inside right edge and solid. And Tiger Woods is the 100th U.S. Open champion in history. A remarkable week by a remarkable player. Tiger Woods heading down with Trey Holland, about to be crowned the Open champion at the Ladies 18th and of Pebble. Please join me in welcoming the 2000 United States Open champion, Mr. Tiger Woods. Well, for those of you who've been watching at home and those people here at Pebble Beach, rest assured this course is nowhere near as easy as Tiger Woods made it look the last four days. Is it safe to assume that there's no more gear that you could kick it into? Man, I played really well today and uh, all week you know, I made those big putts and that's what I bowled down to. I drove the ball beautifully all week, hit a lot of good iron shots, but more importantly, I made all those big par putts. You have long been a student of this game not only a practitioner. Can you talk a little bit about the significance of winning the 100th U.S. Open Championship at this beautiful venue? You know, coming into this event, you know, that's what I had had in mind. And this is the, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way, though, does no, it? it? No, it doesn't. But, you know, today, today and all week, um, you know, I was telling Stevie walking up 18, I said, you know, I've had a, a sense of calmness that you know, I haven't had in a while. Uh, very reminiscent to how I played at Augusta in 97. Uh, I felt very tranquil, very calm. Even amidst, uh, I guess, the, the stormy conditions yesterday, I still felt very peaceful at, at inside. And, you know, for some reason, no matter what happened out there, um, I was able to keep my cool and my composure and, and focus 100% on each and every shot. Like many people watching, I'm sure, your dad taught you the game of golf. Today, of course, is Father's Day. Your dad's not here, but I'm going to make a wild guess and say that I'll bet you he's watching. Any thoughts you'd like to share with him today? Well, it's not too bad a Father's Day present, is it? No, I don't think so. Tiger Woods, congratulations, the 2000 U.S. Open champion. Difficult opening stretch, 10 through 12. The birdie at 13. He heads off. I guess there's that brow he's coming off of right there. Just slipped down the left side. What a beautiful read by Tiger Woods. Tiger for his par. Trying to avoid two bogeys in a row. Oh, it's all 
lot of those made at Pebble Beach a couple of years ago when he won by 15 shots. Par. If you're going to throw it past the hole and spin it, you do want that to be on the right hand side of the hole. Just about like that, Murph. <laughs> right up the hill here. Not a hard putt compared to the others he's made. Should be pretty good distance. It is. Mark carries right about hole high and just spins back a little bit. We have a very makeable putt, about 15 feet. And, uh, for the most part, it stays pretty straight. He hasn't missed much. He has real good eyesight too. Big Tiger Woods, as usual, the pre-championship hype was intense, but you came out, delivered a fabulous opening round 67. You must be pleased with that. I'm very happy. Yeah, I just hung in there, grinded my way around all, all day, and you know, this golf course is playing really difficult. And I tried to stay out of trouble as much as I possibly could. When I did put myself in trouble, just hack it out and, and try to make part of the old-fashioned way. Even though it's early in the championship, how important is it to make a putt like you just made on the last hole? It's always nice to end on a break. I don't care how bad a day you had, a hard good day you had. For some reason, you can end on a birdie and you sleep that much better. When you get into one of these streaks where you seem to hold a lot of putts, is there one key point that you can put your finger on that gets you into that kind of a streak where you seem to hold a lot of putts? You know, I, the whole idea with putting is just getting comfortable. And, and from there, going ahead and trusting your feel. And you know, I, I was kind of kind of struggling with my putting all week, actually, and on, on the putting the putting green and the practice rounds, but you know I just kind of worked at it, and day by day, it progressively, it got a little bit better. And and today was as best it's been all week. It was really good. Describe the interchange you had with your three wood on the seventh tee. We documented the fact that you broke the shaft in it yeah. yesterday. What happened there on the seventh tee? For some reason, something's still rattling inside the the head, and I thought I had a fi I had actually had it fixed twice yesterday, and uh, and I picked it up there. I was going to hit it, and and I. I Put it down, took one practice swing, and I heard something rattle, and I, I shook it, and it must be some kind of loose epoxy inside the head, but uh, I wasn't going to take a chance with, with the three-wood. Didn't want to hit driver there, I should tell you that, but I went ahead and hit a nice little soft arms, armsy shot, and uh, went, out, went out there in, in the fairway okay. What are you going to do about the three-wood now? Well, I have a backup uh, I, brought, I brought with me, and uh, I'll probably put that in play. In retrospect, had the uh, head not been a little bit loose or the epoxy loose, would you have hit the three-wood off the ninth tee, or would you hit the driver anyway there? On, on nine, I, I've hit driver every day in the practice rounds. It just, for some reason, it sets up well to my eye, and I just go ahead and just rip it out there. you got a quick turnaround now before you tee off tomorrow. Anything that you'll be thinking of before tomorrow morning? No, I just try and get as much rest as possible. Uh, make sure I get a good, nice rest, and, and tomorrow come out there with uh, hopefully the same patience, the same game plan, and go out there and give it my best. All right, great start. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Mike? 8.35 Eastern Time to be in earnest. And they came out to see Tiger Woods, who had a one-shot lead to start the day. First hole, second shot, knocked it to four feet. And made birdie. So Woods opened right away to extend the one-shot lead to two. Tiger starting on the front, the easier nine of the two yesterday. This is the second shot at the par four second hole. Oh. 
almost get the sense early. Tiger Woods sensing a moment. Birdie, birdie start. He parred the third. Something was wrong. Then he got back to normal and birdied the fourth. Three under through his first four holes. And Tiger Woods, a four-shot lead. He's made pars ever since. He is bunkered at the eighth. Second shot. Ball is plugged. Good news is he has some green to work with, but you can see he can't spin the ball at all. Ball is not good. Are you guys at all shocked that he didn't have Darren Clark park his ball immediately in front of the hole? Well, I think he was looking for some so many yesterday. Andy, this from what, 10, 12 feet? It's a good 12 feet, Gary. One thing I want to tell you, the better the greens, the better he puts. And uh, as we know, major championships usually have the best, fastest, truest greens. I think this is really a big point for his mental state right now. Move ever so slightly to his right. Uh, yet another one. Should come back. Come back too much. As Andy Norris said. Severe slope there, but it'll leave a nice uphill putt. Aggressive to some sort on this hole. It's up the hill. Putts he made every single time yesterday. Not a lot of break here, pretty much straight up the hill. Yes, there's another one. That's an impressive up and down. Lots of bad things could have happened from that one. It's amazing how little time his club spends in that tall grass when he hits these kinds of shots. Of course, that's a key to his success, I think. saw the miserable weather, how important was the great start you got off to? Uh, you couldn't ask for a better start. Uh, you know, I did hit a very good tee shot off the first hole, but I drew a, a great line and somehow managed to get it up there and then uh, made a putt and uh, burned the first couple of holes. It's always, always great, especially in open. You played exceptionally well the first seven, and then there's a stretch of the golf course that not only gets more difficult, but you struggle a little bit to get the ball where you wanted it. Oh, and this, this golf course is playing brutal, and if you make one mistake here and there, and it just adds up, and we're going to pay a price. And unfortunately, I paid a price a little bit, and I didn't hit the shots that I needed to hit. And consequently, I made some bonus. How important was that par putt at nine after the bunker shot? That was almost impossible. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I didn't very good, a very good break going into the bunker, but then I hit a, hit a great bunker shot just to give myself a, a legitimate chance of making making par. And I just focused so hard on, on making par there that uh, I, I figured with ten. 10, 11, 12 coming up. I need to make that putt somehow, and I don't know, somehow that ball found the bottom. Another big save at 15, and then it looked like you started getting your swing back in time, and you hit a lot of right. solid shots coming in. I did. I hit a lot of good shots coming in, and um, I, it's always nice when you make those big par putts. You know, those big par putts are 
they feel a lot better than making a birdie. You, you don't ever want to drop a shot, and I was able to do that today somehow. Great playing. Off to a terrific start. Right, thanks, thanks, Andy. Ball starts at the center of the green and is turning. This is a pretty looking golf shot. <laughs> Landed every bit of a foot from the golf hole. You have a look at this, Roger Mulvey. It's an awkward looking little putt, Bob. Uh, his feet are slightly above the ball, but the hole looks like it might be cut back slightly to the left. He's looked at it from both sides. I don't, I, I don't think it'll do much, but it may turn a little left at the hole. That's exactly right. Roger. This ball very high and turning left of the hole. Not a particularly good shot, John, really, huh? Yeah, it's getting better by the minute, but it surely wasn't one of them that... Uh... This ball going at the left side of the green. If the distance is right, it should scroll right toward the hole. Well, it is coming, Roger. Is that going to stay up, Gary? Well, it depends on how fast it trickles down there. I think it's going to be very good, Johnny. By most of the players. But not Tiger. There's his first birdie of the day the most difficult hole on the golf course. Six here, John. Aiming a little left, Roger. I don't know if he's playing a cut. Well, he is playing a little cut, and it is cutting right at the flagstick. That'll do it. Right in it? Just a little bit, John. But inside the hole, a uh, firm will go in every time, wouldn't it? I would think it would. And if he wants to hit something, maybe split the edge. About ready to mount a great finish. Bree in the hardest hole in the course, 15. Good solid part, 16. Towering six iron here from 185 at 17. 195, I mean. First fist pump from Tiger Woods. Second birdie of the day, and just like that, he's back to even par. It's almost like he kind of toyed around with a field for a while. Let them have their fun, and then uh, produced a... Uh... That Tiger Woods will take the lead into a... Another Sunday of a major championship. He has taken the lead into the final round of a major. Round of 70 for Tiger Woods. Only player in the field without a round over par. So he takes another lead into a major championship, trying to become the... And Tiger, that was a hard-fought 70. Looked like you never really could get untracked today. Man, I, I fought my butt off today. You know, it was it was a difficult round. I didn't really hit the ball that well, but I just hung around. And you know, that's what you got to do. I mean, this is the U.S. Open. This is our national our national championship, and it's a major championship. And you just got to fight all the way around. You you spread yourself out a little bit at the end with a couple of birdies, but there are more guys that have a have a chance at you tomorrow. Yeah, certainly. The golf course is playing a little bit softer today, and with with all the rain yesterday, the wind didn't, really didn't blow. So. And the guys could be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, the USGA moved up a couple of the tees, and we were able to hit the ball down there a little bit further. Uh, consequently, the guys were just going a little bit lower today. Have you ever played in front of a more vocal or a louder crowd? No, no, no that's for sure. Not, not, uh, not for all 18 holes. No way. So, what would be your expectations for tomorrow on the final round, going out with Sergio? Uh, it'll be, it'll be a tough round for both of us. I think we're going to have to go out there and play hard and be focused and uh, take care of business. Thank you and good luck right, to you. Thanks, Roger. Back to you. speed and I
nice safe par though for Woods. This ball very high, just left of the hole. Good position, center of the green, just under the hole. Looks yeah. real good. It was just looked all right, safely in four shot lead with nine to go. the explosion here as he drives through this rough. Trying to chase the ball through the opening in the green and he's got enough club on it to do that. What a shot. I can't even begin to tell you how good that is. Not many guys could have played that shot at all. Well, Tiger, or uh, Roger, you tried to describe Tiger's shot up to the par five, six at Pebble Beach a couple of years ago. That seven iron up the hill, 200 yards. And I, I guess you just got to watch it and appreciate it. That's just not a fair fight. <laughs> I mean, 99% of them can't do that. That was a very creative shot, Roger. How much does this swing, Roger? Quite a bit, doesn't it? It does have a pretty big break, yeah. Roger. Good eye, Rod. I thought it was there. Tap in birdie. Got it back in a stance pretty good to keep the ball right. Well, from the 18th green, backed him off. It's a Maggard bunker shot on 18. Big, full, beautiful fall right through. at the flag stick. He just knew it was on. That was a perfectly synchronized swing. Great balance. Fired the right side. Right down the line. This green. Not much here, is it? I mean, no, there, I don't think there's very much break in this putt at all, John. Sergio's is really an inside the hole putt, and this one, I think, is right down the draw. Comfortable speed, just get it going and run right in there. Well, that was a good looking tee shot. Both of these guys hit really from 208. Putt did go left, John. Yeah, he might have pulled it to get it going left, and then it broke left. Late in the day, that's one thing about the last group out there. Uh, there are few footprints, even though these greens are about as good as you can get them. They're going to run as good as they did at 1 o'clock this afternoon. One hole left to wrap up his set tee today. 
they haven't been able to cut it since the rain, so it's gone probably up in the five, six inch range now. Look at the width of his shoulders and the and the shape that he's in. I mean, this guy is an athlete, strong one. This ball right down the dead center of the fairway, John. Going out in style, Roger. 12 of 14 fairways. 14 of 17 greens in regulation. It adds up to another U.S. Open title. Tiger Woods on his way to another major championship coronation with a four-shot lead. And all the fans who have been waiting here all day long are about to bring them up. We'll be right back. How are you? It's pretty dark out there, Raj. It is. Tiger has selected a five iron. Middle of the green, huh, John? Oh, no doubt about it. Um, I just Come on, folks, hold up, please. I think he wants the shot that'll just make it the easiest uh, on himself. Check out where his eyes look. Just barely left, maybe 10 feet left of the target. This ball starts at the left side of the green, really not cutting too much, left center of the green. Boy, he just keeps hitting those greens, Roger. He, he just clinic. But what cannot be ignored is the fact that uh, he began his uh, now legendary career on a public facility growing up. His family couldn't afford to join any private clubs. As you look at his mother, welcome him up to another major championship. He first played Navy golf course in Long Beach, California at the age of three. And if you ask him about it, he'll say, I remember the difference the first time I played a country club. The greens were so smooth. It wasn't like putting on Velcro. I started off in the public golf courses, but its uh, I don't know if there could be a more fitting and perfect example to win that trophy and win it on a golf course, first truly public facility to host a U.S. Open and have Tiger Woods win it. You see coming up uh, how the pressure all went out of him and how joyful and how lightly he walked up that hill. That was nice to see. Hard earned. Rich beyond his wildest dreams, but uh, Woods for birdie. Big slicing putt here by Tiger. Tough to get inside three feet. Back to I would like to see what the odds would be to finish the job later this summer. with a couple of three putts, Johnny, and this is um, a non-event, but uh, I would hit this one a little easier, actually. Tiger Woods halfway to the slam and his second U.S. Open championship. And at Beth Page, he is now the people's champion. Well, the best player won. What can you say? And it's a phenomenal course and a produce that. That's a mark of a great golf course when you can get 
really the right guys, number one and two finishing right there in the world. Plus two round of 72 was good enough for Woods. He gave himself the four shot cushion. And he wins his second Open Championship in the last three years. The biggest star on the sports planet today is just about to get bigger. Seventh major championship in the last 11 play. And we'll hear from the two-time U.S. Open champ when we come back. A sigh of relief. Seventh uh, major in the last four years, the most by any player in a four-year period. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 102nd champion of the United States Open. Tiger, it's uh, somehow appropriate that a man who learned to play golf on a public course should win the U.S. Open when it comes to a public facility like this. Congratulations. As was the case at Pebble Beach, you are the only man under par, but it wasn't that easy, was it? No, it was not that easy. This, this golf course was playing awfully difficult today with the wind blowing as hard as it was. Phil got off to a great start, and he played well all day. And, you know, I didn't get off to the greatest of starts, but uh, I just tried to hang in there somehow. and. It was going to be a long, long, tough day, and uh, I was fortunate to come out on top. When you think back on this week with all that's happened, with all this event has been, is there one image that sticks in your mind? What will you remember? <laughs> there is, sir, so many. You know, the one, uh, I guess, playing in the rain. I mean, it was an absolute uh, downpour, and then uh, on top of that here, finishing in the dark with the, uh, seems like strobe lights were going off when I was putting. Uh, it was... Uh, You've done that before. I have done that before, and, uh, you know, I, I like the results. People will talk about the slam. Uh, you have talked about just wanting to win any tournament that you enter. The historical significance, significance is undeniable. Is that something that's in your mind? Not right now, no. I'm going to celebrate this one and then uh, have a good time. This one was uh, hard fought. I mean, it was, it was brutal how hard this golf course was playing. And uh, the p competitors this week put up such a, a great challenge. And, uh, you know, I would like to win, win, the, win the slam. I've done it before. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can do it again. Tiger Woods, congratulations. The champion of the 2002 U.S. Open. Well, it'll be a fun ride this summer to see if Tiger can check off another one on the list. Well, Mickelson and Scott par. Then Tiger's second shot at the par four fourth. And the ball listened. Wow. Setting up a tap in birdie to put him back to plus one. Played here 11 times professionally, never finished out of the top 10. Ever. Pretty remarkable, Torrey Pines. He knows where the bodies are buried. So Tiger began with a double bogey on one, but as he makes the turn, yeah, one under. Get up. 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 Pretty good to be able to make a swing that big, looking just across the bottom. 
take a look at uh, Tiger and watch him. Watch how big a swing he makes. Club face wide open here at address. As the club picked up a bit to the outside. Now the strike down into the grass and accelerate the club and not quick. And we'll take a look from above. Oh, big yeah. swing on that open yeah. face. Yeah. 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 Distance like that is just, I mean, really is. It's very impressive to me. It really is. Now they're just fantastic. You can't get Boana Greens any better than these are. He knows exactly what he's doing. So Tiger Woods, after a double bogey start, has three birdies to his name. He is in the red. Unheralded Justin Hicks has the early lead at Torrey Pines. Appleby, Carlson, and a piece of the rock. One shot off the pace. It is an 123rd in sand saves this year on tour for Tiger Woods. Well, he has sunk a number of pass to and another one on the list for Tiger Woods. Stays at plus one. Yeah, Mickelson has his fair share of fans here, but so does Tiger, who grew up just about 90 minutes away in Cypress, California. And you talk about uh, running hot. Yeah, he, he's so hot, he's not even going to show it to us. He reaches this par 5, 18 and 2, and settles for a three putt par. Ouch. And so a round of 72 for Tiger, the first time out since the final round of that Masters. As we take a look at his scorecard, three birdies, two double bogeys, currently tied for 24th, four shots back of the lead. Tiger, two months since you last played. Talk us through the start of this round. It was a little scratchy to start, but you certainly got yourself back into it. A uh, terrible start. You know, I couldn't ask for a worse start. You know, um, take the time off and then come out with a quick six. I said it wasn't quick. It took a while. A lot of shots on that first hole. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's not like I haven't been there before. Um, you're going to make bogeys out here. I just haven't made two of them on the very first hole. So stay patient. There's some birdies holes out there. And uh, I got back to under par and unfortunately didn't finish there. The 18th tee, there was a noticeable wince um, just after contact. Johnny picked up on it. How is the knee feeling at this point? Uh, it's a bit sore right now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't the only one that I, I winced on a little bit, but um, it is what it is. Got to deal with it and continue playing. And um, uh, unfortunately, a three point last hole. I mean, that's no excuse right there. Thanks for your time. Go it. get some ice. You got it. He's hit this one very well and very high. Watch his funnel to the hole now. Some Woods magic here at 13. One of the things that you only see if you're right here behind the green is this putt is either flat or slightly back uphill. Aiming a little left. Did the charge just begin? Very nice. Yep, Tiger's still five back.
Good shot out to the right, trying to draw back towards the green. Gosh, that's the best shot he's hit all day. <laughs> he had to keep his legs and his feet really quiet. <laughs> that's the best shot he's hit all day. Uh, I kind of watch him walk there. That gate doesn't look the same. I, I know we're over watching that, but naturally, best player. Does he slip here as he comes down? Yeah, right foot went out right there. And you see that uh, extra torque with a little slippage and already that discomfort in the left knee and watch as he walks away. Definitely. Hell is that? Tiger Woods after a very, very mediocre 45 yard wedge shot. Should be straight up the hill here. How about that? How about that? So Tiger Woods, two consecutive birdies, picks up another stroke. Now just one over par, even for the day, and three back of the leaders. A breeze comes off the water. If he turns it right to left, it'll hold it up just a touch. Kind of follow through he was making, trying to hit a low draw. He did. He hit that uh, almost little stinger looking shot. It didn't quite turn over. It was Get pretty straight, but it is beautiful. Get up there. Is he going to stay there, Gary? Looked like it. Just climbed to the top of that slope. Pace, good pace. Mm -hmm. I do believe he likes the fourth hole. Hope all those guys got a good shot of it. Tiger moving. Well, as you say, Chris, they must have gotten a good picture here because nice reaction when this one goes in. What sore knee? It's a whole location to be very aggressive with. Should come back down the hill. We should have quite a bit of break from right to left. Got a chance. Here comes Tiger Woods. That's five threes on the front nine, his second nine of the day. That's a beautiful scorecard, isn't it? You don't see that in U.S. Opens very often, that's for sure. Not unless you're playing net. <laughs> Even that boomer, that's yeah, done. That's yes. right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> A 30 on his second nine here. Well, you know, Chris, we talked about the rust. The rust of not playing competitively for, uh, you know, two months. Well, it may have taken him just a little while to uh, kind of work through that rust, but <laughs> he got it done that nine. Now Mickelson for bogey. Now Phil will shake hands with Tiger Woods and will not see him tomorrow. He can hope that he sees him on Sunday. What a 
pair of days of golf we've had from this threesome and what excitement. Yeah, it's been uh, awfully uh, fun to watch and extremely exciting. I know the crowds have certainly appreciated it. You can tell by uh, their reaction as the players leave the ninth green. Thanks very much, Tiger. You said it was going to take a little bit of time to find your competitive rhythm. How would you describe that rhythm today? Well, it wasn't exactly an ideal start. You know, I was uh, two or through three, but uh, be a nice three there at 13, and I thought I was going to get it going there. And then I, you know, bogey 16 and 17, and uh, then all of a sudden I, you know, made some putts on that back nine. What is it about the front side of this golf course that you seem to just thrive on? Well, I don't know about. Uh, I don't know. It just sits up well, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, you just kind of stay patient out there. I, all I was trying to do is just stay patient and just trying to get my score under par for the day somehow, and you know, that would give me an even par for the tournament. But uh, luckily, I just did a little bit better than that. What's working particularly well in that stretch? Four birdies and five holes after you make the turn. I just made some putts. You know, to be honestly, I mean, I, they weren't exactly you know tap-ins. Um, I didn't, didn't stiff it. I hit it uh, in there 15, 20 feet and basically made those. Second shot at one. How would you describe it? Pin high. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a little more than that? Eight iron pin high. <laughs> Everybody's wondering, obviously, how your knee is going to hold up. You're 36 holes into this championship. I know you're reticent to talk about it, but how would you honestly describe uh, what you're going through with it? It's a little sore right now, but um, you know, I'll be good to go to come tomorrow. and. Uh, Again, we're at the U.S. Open. He's got to stay patient and hang in there and grind it out. I mean, these conditions aren't going to get any easier. Um, this golf course is definitely drying up. It's, the greens are getting faster and harder. Um, so I just got to stay patient. Not firm enough. Not firm enough. Well, it would have gone in, but... A little left. And for him, that's unusual to miss, huh, Gary? Yes, I would agree, Johnny. It was uh, pretty much the ideal putt. Maybe you could have had it a little bit shorter, but can't get much easier on this second green than that. Gotta just drip it over the edge of that slope right about there. Now it should start to pick up some speed as it moves toward the hole. Oh, what a good putt. Mm, that had to look good for a long time. Tiger Woods not seeing much good happening so far. Plus three early in his round. Rocco Mediate with the one shot lead. Tough hole location, folks. That is tough with the wind coming right to left. You know, this just a little left of the hole. Pretty good looking shot. The other ball, that of Robert Carlson there. Get you back out to the seventh and Tiger. Tiger going a little backwards today, three over par. And this putt just outside left edge, a little slower than most guys are reading this putt. He's due, Murph. He is due. What time? Just like that. Got to cut a pretty good view of Carlson's putt, which missed on the right. Tiger bounces back to even par. Big birdie chance for Rocco. I heard a right hand break. Got it. That's a Rocco roar. They're getting louder by the moment here. It's a four under. The lead is back up to three. Listen to that. He's going to miss it if as if he misreads it. Saves the par. Still loses a shot to Rocco with Rocco's birdie at 10. So Tiger is four behind and a tie for third with Davis Love and Jeff Ogilvy. Changed the day yesterday when he made one here. Got him rolling the correct way. By golly, this is a great looking shot if the distance is good. That almost landed in the hole. 
It certainly appeared that way. I, I don't know how you can hit a better shot than that. I don't. I have no idea how you can hit a better shot than that. Take Murph, a look at this swing, Johnny. Take a look at this. Back in his stance, huh, Murph? Really still, look at his head. His head is just, he's just loading up that left arm. It's almost hypo extended. Look at the drive into those thighs. Delay, release, stay down, head down. That is perfection. Yeah. Right there is as good as I've ever seen. Watch this land now. Let's see how close she comes to hitting that flag stick. Ah, I just landed a little past. Man, that what was, a shot. That was, this next one's not going to be that easy, but want another look? One more look and watch the crowd as they, everybody has to get a view of this shot. Look at that guy. Look at this guy right here. Back <laughs> off. Guys. Back off. <laughs> He knows what he's doing. I'd, I'd guess that. His eyes are way out in here, Murph. Yeah, he might be playing it good five feet. Change the championship. How crazy was that putt? Three Eagles today. Snedeker, Axley, and Tiger. What a putt. Well, Gary Coke, that was better than most. Ha. It was indeed, Johnny. One more look to read it as one thing to hit it with the exact speed. Look, Steve Williams knows it's looking good right now. <laughs> Welcome to Tiger Pines, huh? There are those folks back up in the stands. Good thing they were looking. <laughs> wow. That was better than Bay Hill. <laughs> A Tory Tiger roar. <laughs> he can do some things in golf. My, oh, my, oh, my. Watch this. I love Steve Williams' reaction to this thing. Absolutely. He's got the feeling, he's got the feeling. <laughs> Best seat in the house, Steve Williams. I'll tell you, they have a lot of fun together, those two guys. Got trees left, trees right, and a strip of hole. Oh, that might be the knee there. That's the knee. That's the knee there. It's actually pretty good, but that hurt him. That hurt him big time. No weight on the left knee. A lot of torque this on that. Is, this is the left knee here, and it is absolutely yeah, that's uh, it's taking its toll. It got him late in the day on Thursday. We haven't seen a lot of wincing from Tiger, but it's got the latest every example. day. Watch his swing here. Maybe you can see something, uh, folks. Takes it back here, and this is a good shot, by the way. Well, look at that knee. Watch how it snaps right here. That's where he gets that power, and up he goes out of it. And the torque on that uh, when you've got. 128 miles an hour club head speed. He's hitting the ball over 320 yards. You know, he doesn't have to swing quite that hard, but you can see he is major league in pain there. Plus your adrenaline's pumping, and you know, Johnny, you get in the sporting arena, you get a championship in that championship mode. You you, you do can't back tend off. To forget about the injury and you just don't back off. Get in the hole! the bank and stay above the bunker, I believe, in the left-hand side. So the Tiger Woods in a little bit of trouble at 17. He's two back with Mediate. It's Lee Westwood who leads the U.S. Open. 
He's going to have to put a lot of weight on his left hand side here. This ball on a very steep upslope. Not the worst of lies, however. Well, you can hit this just off the right foot. I've done it before with my bad knee. What the? If this thing doesn't go down in the hole, Johnny, it's going to go eight or ten feet by. What the? Carries it much farther than he was trying to. Wow. Yeah, that hit up the flagstick and came back down on the first what bounce. The? Again, I asked the question, how does one guy <laughs> come up with so much of that? <laughs> It's just amazing. And one more look. Oh, obviously comes out much quicker than he expected. <laughs> Jeez, those stands just about got rocked down. Oh. <laughs> got to help him up the hill with that leg of his. Watch where it hits, folks. It hits short and climbs up the flag on the way down. Bingo, and down it goes. Well, if the kids weren't to bed at 9 o'clock Eastern time, what about that eagle drop? They might be up after that war. <laughs> Two-shot swing, Gary. Yeah, easily. Uh, Johnny, after the tee shot, you would have thought he could have made bogey. Go back to 18. And this is Westwood to push it to three under. Pretty straight, Dottie, isn't it? It is. I think it is left center at the most, and it would be his third consecutive birdie here at the 18th. He should make this. Closely, that stroke, he came down into impact and he just curled the heel ahead of the toe. It's what happens when people are nervous. You see it all the time in major championships. That's the classic miss by a Turing pro. The toe stops. That could have given him a three shot lead, but coming back up to post two under. That was big for the guys that are contending. Mm -hmm. That miss, he deserved a birdie. Westwood unable to get it down and two after playing that brilliant third shot down to the hole. Nevertheless, Westwood, who has won 27 times worldwide, 18 times on the European Tour, just one win in the United States, came back 10 years ago in New Orleans, the only player without a round over par thus far 70 71 and 70 for Westwood so Johnny you mentioned earlier that he was playing the steadiest and the numbers bear that out the only player under par here at Torrey Pine. Place hit it way up in the air and the ball is cutting right of the hole. chance to enjoy it. He just looks down and grimaces after another swing. Johnny, you've watched a lot of championship golf in major championship history as Tiger's ball continues to roll back again. Cheered by this crowd. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? It's just been an amazing round having to deal with the knee and the fact that he made the unbelievable eagle and then the chip in that got a little lucky on the last hole climbing up down the flag stick. Limping home. 
And he's in the position that he's been in that's put away 13 previous major championships. Birdie at 17. Got away with that one. But this was absolutely perfect. Get the knee up on ice, Tiger. Look at this. You've got another 54 hole lead in a major championship. And I don't think he's attained that kind of position quite like he did today. This has been <laughs> absolutely remarkable. From above. He just throws it way out to the left. Hits the fall line right here. Starts flattening out and it's hard. He was five shots back with six, six holes ago. Absolutely electric at Torrey Pines. There's your prime time player, Tiger Woods. Mark Steinberg, his agent, gives him a nice little low key high five. Rocco Mediate with his third, Mark. 112 yards. He just said it's playing 120, so he definitely wants to carry it just up to the hole or a little past it. Won't get much spin, I don't think. Stroke of this incredible third round Saturday at the U.S. Open. Rocco Mediate will be two behind Tiger with his plus one round of 72 today. That's good scoring for three straight days by Rocco. He's uh, really got to be proud of himself. Tiger, I've had the good fortune to see you do a lot of stuff, but the backside today was pretty special. <laughs> a couple of eagles and a hole out. Can you tell, take us through the eagle first at 13? Oh, 13. I, yeah, I wanted that angle, so I hit it uh, almost on 12 fairway, which was nice. <laughs> nice play. Yeah, nice play. Yeah, um, yeah then I hit a five iron. Actually, uh, it came out a little, little warm, but uh, just wanted to make sure I tried to get in the back bunker, but it actually held, which was great. Uh, the putt, I was just trying to lag it down there inside three feet somehow, and it, uh, it went in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody had gotten that putt high enough, so you're the first person that really read the putt properly. Now 17. You drive it right again. Second shot, grass slope above the bunker. What happened? Well, that, that little pitch shot came out a little warm. I wasn't trying to hit it that far, what? and uh, it was just pure luck, man. When, when it goes on one hop like that, uh, that's just pure luck. Now 18, it looked like on a tee that you were just trying to figure out how can I hit something down there in the fairway. Yeah, and it looked much. like Yeah, it looks like you're rehearsing. I'm going to hit some kind of cut and see if I can get it down there in the fairway, which it did. Mm -hmm. Take us through the rest of the hole. Yeah, pretty much played kind of a duck slice out there in the fairway. Um, sort of left a left bunker and kind of sliced it back in there. and. I had uh, had a five wood in there, I had a 227 hole, and decided to hit the same shot. And um, I was practicing on the range actually earlier today for number number uh, 16. Uh, at the time, the wind was kind of more off off the west, and I didn't think I could get three iron there. So we were rehearsing a little five woods, and this was exactly the same shot I was rehearsing. So uh, hit it up on the green and uh, made a bomb. And and the putt coming down the hill, big break. Yeah, it was. You know, after I saw saw Robert's putt break quite a bit at the end, at the, um, coming down there, so I figured, you know what, I'm gonna get a little bit more of an angle where I gotta send out a little bit more, and uh, I probably wouldn't have made my putt unless I had seen his putt first. We have to ask you about the knee. I know it's a subject you really haven't wanted to talk about much this week, but obviously uh, we can see you grimace on some swings. Uh, a couple of things: uh, Is there a particular kind of shot that it bothers you on most? And two, is it getting worse day by day? Uh, particular shot, no. Just um, whenever it decides to, you know, to act up. And is it getting worse? Yes, it is. Dan, back to you. <laughs> Thanks for playing, pal. <laughs> two. And Rocco mediate for Bernie to get to two under par. He may be in the lead in a minute, Gary. This is a right edge putt. Yes, sir. Good start for Rocco. And the fans love him. Hey. He's going to be pretty shocked when he sees the leaderboard next time and saying, whoa, what's going on back there? It wouldn't surprise me knowing him, though. 
to be careful not to knock it by though. Trying to make it. Well, if he makes that, Tiger Woods will have started his four rounds in this U.S. Open with double bogeys three times. What's the feeling like out there, Roger? There's got to be like a lot of tension in here. It's, it's absolute shock, Johnny. I don't think anybody can believe what they're watching here. I really don't. I think right edge. So Tiger's fourth double of the week, the most he's ever had in this championship, yet he's just one back. I'm putting off a ledge here on the left-hand side of the green, and we'll cross over a ridge and pick up speed and turn right. Quite a little bit, actually. Second. Tiger from the bunker. That's not an easy shot. Easy to leave it short. Hoist it way high. And just a little short. Beauty. Did a very good job. Should make this. And that's six cars in a row after the plus three start after the first two holes. The Tiger who looked like he just might shoot himself way out of this thing early, has settled down. And you see the most Eagles since they've been able to keep track of such things since 1992. Tiger has not given the gallery one good chance to cheer today. Get the Slow cut, moving to the right. Going to get there. No roars today, guys, so far. It's still early. <laughs> well played hole, though, huh? Yeah, very well played hole. Taking advantage of the par fives is what he does, Johnny. This would make him nine under par on the par fives for the week. There's a little roar. <laughs> finally, a birdie for Tiger. He moves to one under par. Over to 10 for birdie. Rocco Mediate. Sort of cut off follow through with a fade hold. Well, it's just a little left of the hole trying to cut. That was a heck of a shot. That was a beauty that's going to come back. We saw this earlier. Comes all the way down within five feet. Gallery's going to go crazy. And there we have it, Tiger Woods on the prowl. Is for the lead by himself. The field's gonna quiver if he makes this. Expected anything else. Tiger, after a plus three start, the first two holes has birdied two out of the last three and has taken charge of the back nine in this U.S. Open. Rocco with 13. Shooting straight up the hill there, Mark. And all the way from the bottom of the hill. Good looking shot here. Beautiful shot. First guy to get it there, I'm going to tell you. Now he's having some real fun, Murph. by three shots over his friend Chris Riley. So many great PGA Tour stars have won that prestigious junior world on this golf course. Tiger won a total of six junior world titles. Tiger with the flag stick out. Raj means one thing. He's thinking in. Gonna go to the right. 
Oh, it's got a lot of speed. Oh. Got a lot of speed to it. Yeah. That's the one problem when you try to make chips, huh, guys? Is that sometimes you race them by. Dodging bullets. Yes, he is. Or an eagle three. Could potentially win it. Setting up for a little fade, it looks like. And he starts this ball well left, and it's cutting, but that's not going to come back enough. It's going to miss left. Boy, and Rocco dodges. Another one, middle of the bunker for Tiger. How's it gonna end here at Torrey Pines? Rocco clinging to a one-shot lead. Let's go, Tiger! Uh -oh. Did he get it? Oh, one right and right rough. Boy, that's a huge mistake there. Rocco, what's going through your mind? I, that's all I got. <laughs> I, I left it all out. I'm all over the golf course out there. It was the most fun you could ever, I could ever have dreamed it would have been, and I, I held myself together somehow. It what, was dicey at times. <laughs> what makes you the proudest about the way you played today? Just knowing who's behind me and paying attention to what was going on. I had some opportunities to get maybe a couple up there, and I just missed them. And, um, you know, I, I haven't been in this situation, well, I'm ever really this close ever in a major, so it was cool. cool to, I felt good. You know, I gave it a few hooks, which I tend to do at times, and um, but I kept it together somehow. And I made some good putts coming in on 16 and 17, and, and the, the one on 18 was the scariest I had. It's only two feet. <laughs> was there ever, was there ever a time out there where you were thinking about winning the U.S. Open? When I got when I when I when I buried the second hole, I just said, just keep putting the ball in the fairway in the greens, and you could win this thing. And obviously, a few mistakes happened, and then all of a sudden you're trying to hold on, and I'm watching what they're doing, and no one went crazy, and Tiger started bad again, and no one, no one, he was coming back. I knew he wasn't out of it when he was two or three over par after three holes, so just try to keep doing your job. All yes. right, let's watch what's going to happen now. Let's see what happens. I, don't, I can't do anything else. <laughs> Guys, remember last year at Oakmont, he needed birdie on the 18th and final hole to tie Cabrera. Makes a mighty lash out at the bottom. Can you get lucky and get the right distance? Look at this, gonna fall down that hill. That's a pretty darn good shot.
that he had on the third shot. And that ball went in by a hundredth of an inch. This ball could have lift out just as easy as it went in. It just <laughs> Double fist pump, chest up in the air. Here's how close this came to maybe not going down. But when you're Tiger Woods. Oh, man. They don't dare wiggle out. Another 70-second pole scene from Tiger Woods. Now listen to what Rocco had to say. Unbelievable. I knew he'd make it. Yeah, I knew it. He's he's Tiger Woods. Right. You got it. Beat him tomorrow. Okay. in the U.S. Open since Southern Hills back in 2001. And Tiger's 54-hole streak has a chance to continue. <laughs> the man you just shook hands with and you have a tea time tomorrow, got, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. In the morning sometime, I don't know when, but um, you can't ever expect him to miss. It's amazing. You and I were standing there talking. I said it's not in your personality to root for a guy to miss a putt. No, Is no, that correct? No, absolutely, no. I did all I could, and you can't root against somebody. It just does, doesn't make sense to, and um, I was prepared for that to happen, so I did all. I, I couldn't do anything else, I don't think, today. All right, if you couldn't do anything more today, what do you have to do oh tomorrow God, to win? Battle Royale. I mean, I got to play against the number one player on grass as far as playing golf, so we'll see. <laughs> I what are you going to do, what are you gonna do now? Well, I guess I got to go to the press room for a while and yak, which I don't mind doing, and then probably rest. I'm tired. What time is it anyway? Remember, it's I'm late. Old. I'm old. So he, I got him by 15 years. So congratulations on a great day. Thank you. Thank Good you. Tomorrow. Thanks, Mark. Tiger, <laughs> great four at the last. Not the kind of four I envisioned you making. Oh, you think? <laughs> but the third shot, if you could, it looked to me like you hit it in an area where someone had played a shot. Not so yeah. much a divot, but it right. disturbed the grass there and it settled a little bit. A little bit. It looks like someone may have played there, someone in a practice round or something. But uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, it felt like I could get uh, the club on it and. You know, we were kind of caught in between, right, right in between clubs. So we decided to go with a, a hard 60 and at least give ourselves a chance um, instead of trying to play a 56 and bounce it in there. And it worked out. And the putt. Now it looked to us like maybe it would start breaking left a little bit from the start and straighten up a little around the hole. Is that close? Well, it was a little wobbly down there. You know, it was, <laughs> that, that, that ground was a little, um, a little bouncy. So I was just kind of, I played probably about uh, two and a half balls outside the right. And I said just to stay committed to that and just make a pure stroke because you know, once it starts rolling down there, it's kind of like playing Plinko. You don't know what's going to happen, but uh, only I can control is my stroke. Now, I have to ask you about the knee. It seemed like it bothered you early on, and then it seemed like it didn't bother you as much as the round progressed, different from other days. True or not true? Uh, true. Um, took some things to kind of relieve that. <laughs> and adrenaline, maybe? Uh, that helps, too. <laughs> All right. How do you think it'll hold up tomorrow, then? Uh, we'll see. Okay. You got Have it. a good night's nice sleep. Buddy. See you tomorrow. Here he goes. The tough first hole back into the wind. Good looking drive here right down the center. Turning a little bit toward the left hand side. Very impressive. He did get in the playoff to just get here into this championship. Tiger's third playoff in a major. Obviously perfect record of 2-0. This one cutting up the right hand side, going at the bunker. And gets a nice kick out into the fairway. It's good now. Yeah. So both players in the fairway, and Tiger says, finally, I'm in good shape. That's what I was afraid of. Not even close, Rocco, but um, he was playing that to go left to right. It didn't. He should have been watching it when it went out of the bunker. But it is a deep bunker. <laughs> so a baby start for Rocco. Tiger still left with a little far putt to clean up. Now he started off yesterday morning. The pain was evident very early. 
Kingdom Rock. And it is coming in from the right. Could have been a 360 lip out. It's in now. And on they go to the fifth. And Rocco holding on to a one shot advantage over Tiger with a nifty up and down. Pretty good line. Back into the wind. Yeah, but he's got to land it on a down slope. Can he stop it? Can he stop it? That's a heck of a shot. It's coming back. Yeah. It's Making its way back toward the hole, so wow, a good recovery there. He's just got such a perfect putting stroke, he rarely pushes it or pulls it. Get on the you put towards that water, though, you always got to say, How quick is it going to be? Pretty good. Is it firm enough? Is it firm enough? This is just right of the hole. How about stiff? What a shot. Wow, that's a beauty. That thing was painted right down the flag stick. Did he catch it? I don't know. Found a little chunky, but I think he might have just barely might made have gotten it. gotten lucky. Yeah, it's going to go way right now. He has a different <laughs> route. at this by Rocco. He didn't need to go that far left, but he, he did it. Clean <laughs> it outside right. And Tiger will have at least a one shot lead. He just doesn't miss those putts. That, that's why he's Tiger Woods. Other guys, they make it and you get all excited. Wow, I made it. And for him, it's, hey, it was in before I hit it. Pretty yeah, straight. there's not much to it, actually. Pretty straight, right in the fall line, I think. That was an important putt. Very nice by Rocco. Yeah, that was a very impressive up and down. A while will keep it down into that wind a little more. Put it a little bit. But he's playing a draw. It's drawing in just right of the hole. Yeah, good looking shot. Very nice. Excellent position right under the hole. The A game is coming out, guys. Four birdie. Just an X 
excellent speed and an excellent read. Tiger Woods can read greens as well as anyone I've ever watched. Who doesn't waste much time getting in his second. Farther pass than he wanted it. I know that. Pretty similar chip shots, looks like. A little left for bogey for Tiger. Pretty, pretty important putt here, I tell you. to stay one back and he does not find the cup. So now as they prepare to make the turn through nine holes Rocco mediates Cinderella story in a great deal of jeopardy trailing the greatest player on the planet by two strokes now through four holes of this playoff. Stroke a genius by Tiger. It's another one of those putts that could have been a violent lip out to the right. And somehow that ball just dove in on the pro side. I thought it was going to be a violent lip out to the right. And it looks like it's going to miss. Oh, just eats it up. That's the advantage of being on the high side. And Tiger, who has fired the crowd up here on more than one occasion, along the course of Tory Pines, gets him out of their seats again. How many long? Huts at big moments have we seen from Tiger. The Rock is shocked right now. Tiger is pulling away a little bit. No. No. It was uh, not his best effort. So, at best, a bogey. Tiger Woods. His back to back bogeys at 11 and 12. Okay. So mediate with a par. And just one behind. That's what you want to do, put pressure on him, I'm Murph. Try your best. If it's at all possible. Look at Rocco. <laughs> yeah, that's your ball, Rocco. Well, he's making sure there's no mud or anything on the back. Right. There's Birdie. that did not go in. We've seen a couple really crawl in. Now we've been out here exactly three hours and a couple of minutes, and it is all tied up. Both, both plus one. The game is on. That is the shot shape, and it is just left of the hole. And it is good about uh, 20 feet behind the hole, he carried that ball past hole, huh? He had plenty of club with yeah, that he did. Ball. Right. Oh. 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 It's, uh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Made it by how far? Yeah, about a yard. Will that roll back? I think it'll stay there, John. Okay. Got away with it. Yeah. He didn't yeah. make it by much. Easy. Bullet 
break enough? Will it break enough? It won't get there. Mm. That was sticky. Uh, surprisingly so, considering it was headed toward the ocean. Real sticky. Tiger in with his par four. Second to move it to today. This one is pulled again, just like he did yesterday. In the bunker. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's not a good shot. Little finish there after the swing. Doesn't mean it's not in the fairway, and Tiger's right in the middle. Well, there's Tiger when he goes to hit it. He does it. That makes this hole for him a par four. How's that look, Mark? Well, it's headed up the right hand side. Should be just fine. That's his 67th shot of the day. Tiger is hitting his 68th shot of the day. Using a high cut at the center of the green. Didn't have a lot of room to play with there, but it is safely on in two. Just a little bit, Johnny, but it may be a good distance. That's a very makeable putt right there. Wow. That's Legal today. A little left for birdie. That's a lot of left. After that, that was a bit of a trick putt. They actually went left at the hole. There's the birdie he needed. through the 108th U.S. Open and still not enough to decide a champion. Sudden death we go for just the third time since it was instituted back in 1954. Rocco and Tiger play on. This ball going up the right side. And it's okay, stays inside the fairway line. He's gonna have a big advantage. This one's going left again, Murph, toward that bunker. Maybe short. No, Just no thin. jumped in. Just a hard hole, and that is up against the lip. That may not be good at all. This one is pulled. That came out way left. Did they hit the cart path or just scoot on that hard pin? I think it landed left of the cart path. I could jump right up against the grandstand over there. Let's check the feet and see if we see some slippage here. 
Okay, so far. Okay, there comes the left foot back. That looked okay. Right foot pretty good, yep. Yeah. It was just the lie itself. Here's where it ends up now. Over to the grandstands area. And certainly aiming out right. While drawing, it is low right of the hole. Well played. Just nice. couldn't get much spin coming out of there, so he's going to have to probably make a 20-footer. Hard enough. That one put him on his knees. Yeah, he wanted, he doesn't want any part of watching Rocco putt. Well, can Rocco do what Tiger's been doing to golfers now for years? That's this reaction. Goes down, down. And Rocco saying, is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? That's a great shot right there, isn't it? <laughs> Rocco and his caddy Matt Ackett's. He's still got another putt, Rocco. And in one of the most remarkable performances of his career, Tiger Woods perseveres through Torrey Pines and wins a third U.S. Open championship. Two good buds there. Fourteen majors now for Tiger. Rocco, when you look back on today, what do you think you'll remember most about it? Hanging in there with this man. He's so hard to beat, obviously. I don't, when I throw three at him, he throws that little 300 mil degree on 18. He's unreal, but um, I, I, I'm fairly, you know, obviously I would love to have won. And, um, I don't know what else to say. It was it was a great it was a great day. I, they wanted to show they got one. I mean, I three down through ten. I thought it was going to be over quick, and I just kept hanging around. And he made a few mistakes, and bang, 19 holes. Everywhere you walk today, you heard Rocco, Rocco, Rocco. How does that make you feel? It was unbelievable. I mean, they were just doing it now, and um, yeah, it's this is huge for me. This is a, this is uh, the putt I made on 18 just to stay here again. I, I, I handled it. Uh, I was nervous as a cat, but I handled it. So. And who knows, maybe next time I'll go one better. Did it ever cross your mind at all that you might not have another chance like this, 18 holes with Tiger, yeah, oh, Monday sure. playoff? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, I had the putt I had on 18 a, a few moments ago. I just said to myself, you waited your whole life for it. Don't lag it. You know, just give it speed. And I just yanked it a touch, a little nervy. But um, I, I really can't really complain. I, I, I did the best I could. You didn't win the U.S. Open, but what will this week do for your career? Um, hopefully I, I get to play in it again and a few other things. and um, It just showed me that I still can compete, obviously, and I, I want to keep competing. Is that the most important thing you learned about yourself? Hold on. Hold on. I just don't, I never quit. I never quit, and I, I've been beaten down a few times and came back, and, and um, I, got, I got what I wanted. I got a chance to, to beat the, the best player in the world, and I, I came up just a touch short, but I, I think I had him a little scared at once, which was great. He just said, great fight to me, and that means the world right, right there. Congratulations, Rocco. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jim Vernon, President of the United States Golf Association. How about that? Please join me in welcoming our 108th U.S. Open champion, Tiger Woods. Tiger, congratulations. Have you ever experienced a major championship with this kind of ups and downs, so volatile? No, um, it, was, uh, it was unbelievable. The whole week, um, the, the, the golf course was set up so fair, but also so difficult. 
Um, everyone who's come out to this week has been absolutely fantastic. The, the atmosphere is incredible. I mean, the fans here, um, they were, were made the tournament. And then um, today, today was just un unreal. I mean, honestly, that um, it just kept ebbing and flowing. You know, it, you know, Rock looked like he was in control. Now I thought I was in control, and he was back in control again. And it was back and forth, back and forth. And um, 90 holes wasn't enough. We had to, yeah. you know, go one more. Walking away from 10 today, up by three, nothing's a sure thing, but you must have felt pretty confident, and that three-shot lead evaporated quickly. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, three shots uh, on, on this golf course isn't much, and you know, I, was, uh, I was playing a little military golf here, you know, so left and right, so um, I was kind of slapping it around, and uh, just I was just trying to get the ball on the green. I was, felt like I was putting so well, just get the ball on the green somehow, and I just had to struggle doing it, but... Uh, you know, Rock just made you know three birdies right there in a row, right there on the trot, and it was uh, that hat trick was also one of the, one of the more impressive runs that uh, you can ever have on this golf course. Throughout the weekend, how much was the knee bothering you, and how much of a factor was it in this championship? I'm glad I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I, uh, I I I really don't feel like playing anymore. It um, it's a it's a bit sore and. Um, I, all I can say is uh, the atmosphere is what kept me going. You know, the, the tournament, being in a major championship here at, at Torrey Pines, all the people. Um, you know, it, it could have been very easily. Um, I, I, I could never quit in front of these people. It was just, it, it wasn't going to happen. There have been not just so many victories, but so many extraordinary moments, kind of indelible moments, and there were several this weekend. What stands out in your mind? Oh God, you know, at um, <laughs> what did I make three doubles, three doubles or four doubles this week? Um, made three eagles. Um, count four doubles. Four, four doubles. Yeah, perfect. Even better. <laughs> uh, you know, it just it just was an unbelievable week. I mean, I, I the it was up and down, up and down all, all, all week. And, uh, you know, for 91 holes through all that, um, I finished 100 par. When do you plan to play again? Uh, not for a while. Not for a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut it down for a little bit here and uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Two more quick things. A final thought about Rocco Mediate. A lot of guys have made a run at you. This is one of the gutsiest runs. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, <laughs> you know, Rock, and every, everyone knows Rock is such a, he's a great guy. And, you know, Rock has been just unbelievable, unbelievably nice to me and, and a great friend to me over the years, ever since my first year out here on tour. And to have him out here and, and you know, don't forget, I mean, Rock was in, in bad shape last year. His back was really bothering him. And for him to be out here again at, at 45 and playing this well, um, I can't wait five more years now. He's off to our tour, and uh, <laughs> you know if he keeps playing like this. Uh, but no, honestly, uh, it was an unbelievable gutsy performance. I mean, he he played so well. He put so much pressure on on me all all day today, and he played well all week. I mean, he um, it was just a, a it was a great battle uh, all day, and uh, also a great friendship too. Last thing. The U.S. Open traditionally ends on Father's Day, in this case, a day later. But this is the first U.S. Open you've experienced as a father. Your daughter, Sam, was born just shortly after last year's U.S. Open. She is here. How much of this she'll remember firsthand, we can't say. She's just a few days shy of her first birthday. But it has to matter that she was here. There's no doubt. Uh, it, you know, this is, you know, I remember here at, at Torrey during um, the Buick, it was the first time she ever crawled. And now she's running around here, so um, it, uh, it it means everything. It, it really does, you know. To have, you know, I, I lost my dad a couple of years ago, and I know how special it was for in, in 2002 for me to bring this home and um, talk to him about it and share it with him. Um, I can't do that anymore. But now I'm a father. I'm on the other side now. So uh, it, it this couldn't have been. This is probably the, you know the, the greatest tournament I've ever had. Congratulations, Tiger. Thank you. Thank you very much. To win his third U.S. Open championship. And as you heard Tiger say at the end, 14 major championships, all those wins worldwide, but the most special occurred at Torrey Pines this week. So long, everyone.